Hello and welcome to One Voice Live, uh, where we talk about one voice, what it is, and how it fits in the world of singing. I am your host, Michael Maresca, taking over for week two for Alex Zito. Yes, today's show is number 42, and we'll be talking about whistle and rumble coordinations with our very special guest. Yes, folks, that's right. The tables have turned. Uh, today, we'll be talking with One Voice Live host, One Voice coach and master performer songwriter, Alex Zito. Please welcome Alex Zito to the show. Alex! Hello! Ooh, how exciting this is. How exciting. I'm so excited. I can't here. express how excited I am. <laughs> I, I, I remember because I was asking you uh, last week, I was like, you know what? I was like, Alex, do you want to be on the show with me and, and do this with me? And you're like, yes. It was like, you're so genuinely yep. excited. It was so fun uh, because you've done now so many uh, shows, 40 in total, which is incredible. Um, and we're wrapping, we're, we're, we're rounding the corner almost to a year of One Voice Live, which is astounding. Mm -hmm. um, so those of you out here watching this right now, if you feel like there's other people who would be... Um, uh, well fitted or suited for one voice share this with them uh share this information with them subscribe to our channel to find out when we are live again uh thanks again for watching so um yeah today we're talking about rumble and whistle coordination i'm really excited um or coordinations really excited to be talking about this with you um and i think alex uh we were talking about this preparing this for everyone we've got some some audio snippets uh, that we're going to be sharing with you all of us um uh making these sounds which is really cool and utilizing these coordinations this all came about uh from a viewer kyle haas um and uh thank you so much for your inquiry about this uh and it developed this show today so we're excited thanks again for that kyle really appreciate that yes so let's dive right in shall we um let's do it let's do it so here we go we're gonna first dive into uh we're gonna talk about the coordinations real quick and their names because I think that's a great place for us to begin. Uh, so everyone, take a look here real quick. We're going to first take a look at people assigned male at birth uh, in terms of where they are. And also um, keep in mind, well, let me show you this first. Let's start here. So we have the five coordinations, yeah? Um, we have rumble, chest, middle, head, whistle. And remember, uh, none of these are um, a mixture of another, yeah? Alex, you want to talk more about any of that? Yeah, just uh, to drive that home, each coordination, we have the two laws, each coordination produces sound in its own way, and each coordination is responsible for a certain set of notes. So again, it's not about stretching a coordination to expand range into another's territory, but instead creating pitch in a completely entirely new way. Beautiful. And I didn't mean to just like throw that out to you. <laughs> You're like, whoa, okay. No uh, yeah. <laughs> um, and let's take a look now at... Uh, the uh, people assigned female at birth. So here we are looking at their coordination ranges. I mean, as Alex said, each coordination is responsible for a specific range of notes. However, today uh, we are going to be just talking about um, rumble and whistle, the two on the end that I'm excited to talk about today. Uh, so let's get to it. I hope that uh, clarifies your brains. Yeah, Alex, go. Yeah, just one thing. If that's something that you you just heard all that information, you said, what are you talking about? Uh, the show on all the coordination, the coordination theory and weight theory, uh, highly recommend going back to watch that one. Michael, do you remember which number that is? Yeah, I don't know which number, but that's uh, it's chest head mix. And what I'll do is I will have that uh, in the notes, uh, the description for the show, as you all can get access to that and take a peek. Yeah. Um, awesome. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. So let's dive right into some of this. Yeah. So these are the two coordinations on the extremes, um, in our world. And what a lot of people might think sometimes is, uh, you know, how do I do that? That that's, that's, what's going to make me a great singer. Oh, and by the way, everyone, you'll probably see me taking notes because I, I, I like taking notes. It helps me remember things where I'm at, et cetera. Uh, so I take notes often. Uh, so if you see me looking away, it's not because I don't love you. It's just because I'm learning and I'm <laughs> Um, so yeah, I think sometimes, um, you know, Alex, I'm sure that you've experienced this inside of master classes with people. Uh, you know, you, you talk about the coordination theory and you talk about coordinations, all the five coordinations that we talk about that are, that we find in commercial singing. Um, and what are some of the reactions that you get from people the moment they recognize is the moment they recognize that there's five coordinations, what do they suddenly realize they need they must have in order to be a good singer 
access to all of the coordinations. <laughs> uh, there's so much excitement, which is awesome, but there also comes a lot of fear when they recognize the gap between what they have and what they can have, but don't have yet. That's so real. That's so real. It becomes this kind of disparity, right? So the only thing you can see mm -hmm. is that disparity between, you know, what I, I used to know, you know, as we all say, right? Ignorance is bliss. But once you see it, you can't unsee <laughs> it. So you start off and you first see that this is your voice and this is all you get to have. But once we talk about this in a master class, you learn about the coordination series, you start to realize that there's a whole lot more for you, right? And so everything rises. And now all you can see is, is all this disparity between what you know you can have and what you do currently have which can create a lot of strife and struggle for a lot of people. So putting this in perspective now is really important. Um, and something that we say often is that having access to all five coordinations and more doesn't make you a good singer. Uh, <laughs> being a good singer comes from control, uh, expertise in, in, in uh, uh, musical skills um, and control over weight, volume, etc. cetera. Uh, there's a lot of facets that go into being an excellent singer. And uh, I just wanted to put that at rest in a lot of your minds for those of you who might have been uh, spiraling <laughs> as soon as we talked about having <laughs> coordinations <clears throat> you can you can rest at ease um, anything else you want to add to that Alex before we move forward yeah no just spot on I could spend the rest of my life working on middle coordination uh, yeah. and not run out of things to touch on so yeah a hundred percent so real so real yeah I mean because everything there's always something new right like there's always a new style there's you know something that you haven't tried yet and you're like oh wow if I could really do that or suddenly some artist shows up on the spot and is amazing. And you're like, wow, I, I would love to sing like that. I, I want to know what that is. And so here you go on this, this next adventure of figuring out how to get your voice mm -hmm. to do what you want to do, which is really, really cool. Um, I have a few questions that I want to ask you here in a little bit, Alex, uh, about the coordinations, but I think we should actually dive into sharing some examples first. Um, Let's do it. So why don't we do that? Yeah. Okay, everybody, here we go. Uh, and give us a thumbs up or, uh, or, or a message, just a comment. Let us know where you are, where you're coming from, where you're watching from today. Um, and also if things um, sound weird for some reason. All right, so here we go. Uh, <laughs> let's take a look first at uh, a scale. Um, we're gonna look first at whistle. And then we're gonna take a look at rumble. Uh, I wanna show you guys kind of all the facets of these because I think it'll be really interesting uh, to listen to. Oh, and let me say this one more thing. Um, Kyle was looking at this from the standpoint of the uh, acapella group, uh, Home Free, and they sang a song, Ring of Fire, where at the very end, uh, the bass of the group sings a really low note. And so we're gonna show you some of that today. Um, and that's where this is coming from. So here we go. Uh, starting <laughs> off with whistle first, you all can hear it and what it is. Uh, this is just a scale that Alex sang. Here we go. Oh, and I will warn you, if you've got your speakers turned up way high, you've got your earphones like just boosted, just be ready. You might want to turn it down and then you can boost it back up when you're ready. Uh, here we go, whistle. sharp so that is alex uh we've got we've got some snippets from you for you all that we took um uh of ourselves you know just recording some of these things at random and uh here they are that is that is that is your regular one voice live host folks the hour <laughs> uh magnificent that is a c sharp all the way above soprano high c alex your vocal cords must have been exploding out of your body you, they you, were. you are a unit. They're gone, actually. There, you have no more vocal cords. You lost them <laughs> when using vocal coordination. Uh, yeah, what is that? What did that feel like? How can I imagine it? I imagine that I should feel free, like a, like a, like a snowflake in the wind. Is yes, you're I not wrong. <laughs> um, here's the first thing I will say: is that was about 20 minutes after I woke up in the morning, hadn't spoken at all. Uh, and I can't, I couldn't do that right now if you asked me to. So I only have whistle at certain points during the day. I do not have consistent access. But uh, for me in the morning, what it feels like is a tiny bit of pressure, uh, very little air, and 
like I can't feel where the note is coming from. It feels kind of uh, like I can't track it as well as a lower note in my in my voice. So, Alex, <clears throat> the way you got there, did you just slowly but surely stretch, you know, what we would conventionally call, what people call your head voice? And did you just stretch it larger and larger and larger every day to get there? I did not do that. What? No, I did not. No. Uh, I could never hit that note by extending because that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine notes into uh, whistle. whistle coordination. Woo! Woo! And extending a coordination that far would, I my vocal cords would be exploding. Um, <laughs> so no, it was something I stumbled upon one day, actually. I was, it was probably a day when my voice was tired and I was laughing or making some weird noise and a note about, around that high came out. And I remember thinking, I think that's whistle coordination. And then thinking that sounds, or that feels nothing like I expected it would feel. Uh. Um, because sound is being created in a new way. And oftentimes when we sing in a coordination or a weight that we haven't sung in before, we have an expectation of what it will feel like. And it is oftentimes very different than that. I, can you talk more to the expectation? Because I, I think from your experience, when you were younger, right? Uh, what was your experience of, or your thought process of people who had whistle? What did, what did you think? I just thought they were insane. I thought they were like the gifted, the special ones. Uh, so impressive. Um, and that they, I thought that they were just taking what I knew as head voice and just taking it higher. Um, yeah. And just stretching it up there. It's, it's such an interesting idea when we hear it because it just it just seems just ridiculous you know it's like a it's like a it's like a whistle for dogs right and, and that's what people think they're like ah you can't use that yet many singers have uh, Mariah Carey's famous for it Ariana Grande um, mm -hmm. um, Minnie Ripperton I believe um, mm -hmm. the, the bunch a bunch. There's an opera singer that I love her name is Natalie Desay and I'll see if I can find a clip to oh. put in the yes. description. Um, but she, I believe the song I'm obsessed with, she sings a high, don't quote me, but a high B in whistle. Yes. And she's just developed her whistle to the weight and volume that matches her head coordination. Woo! So it just sounds, it's gorgeous and it's large and it's, it's, it's just unbelievable. Uh, and not, it doesn't sound like the whistle coordination that we know from like Mariah Carey and Ariana Grande because she's made, different choices within her whistle coordination, but it's just so cool to hear, to hear a developed whistle like oh, that. That's, that is amazing. That is, that is, it's so inspiring when you hear it and you're like, wow, mm -hmm. like, wow. It's rare that people really develop that coordination, you know, uh, because it's yep. rare that anyone writes any music at all uh, to go up there. And generally it's, it's someone who is optioning up as it were. Um, yes. That's really cool. Okay. So now everyone, uh, I want to show you uh, or I want you to listen to um, what it's like to someone accessing a coordination that they haven't really had access to before. So this is me, uh, and I'm going to show you guys what this sounds like so you can hear it, because what you're about to hear is you're about to hear a shift from head coordination into whistle coordination. And generally what occurs when there is a, uh, a failure from one coordination to the next is um, you generally tend to have quite a jump. Uh, there's a jump three, four, five, six, seven, eight note jump that'll occur and suddenly you'll end up in the middle of a coordination. Uh, and often that's because you can't force the other coordination that high and so you quite literally just fail. But what your brain will do is it will quickly try and fix uh, what you've broken. Okay, so here <laughs> I am uh, cracking up into whistles. So here we go. Uh, approaching the A of head coordination, listen. Yeah, 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 yeah. Crack. Yeah, 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 yeah. And now at the G. Yeah, 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 yeah. Crack. It's tiny, it's tiny, tiny. Yeah. I'm at an E flat, above soprano high C. Let's see if I can go a little bit higher. Then an F, F sharp, both soprano high C. So 
but you all can hear how clear it is and how strong it is once it gets in there and the body figures out, oh, this is the coordination, this is the coordination, but you all will hear me crack back and forth because my body's shifting back to head coordination because it understands that. So it says, no, 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 you, you, you broke something. I know how to sing up here. I will sing in head coordination for you, which is why generally what will happen if you've acted as a coordination for the first time, you'll be cracking back down kind of, kind of abruptly, or violently. <laughs> Um, <laughs> your savage coordination below will be pulling you down like a zombie under the ground. I, I often think about it that way. I often think of this like you know you're 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 walking along and you're in you're in head coordination or whistle coordination for the first time. Like hey, dude, this is really great. And out of nowhere, middle or head corners like just comes out of the ground. <laughs> oh, it just pulls you down. I don't know why I think oh, that's man. what it feels like. It literally feels like you're like. Go! and it just pulls you it's unbelievable uh the feeling and it's and then, and then what's amazing is then you like can't get back which is so frustrating you're like no mm -hmm. no i had it i had it and then your brain and yep. body are like yep you're welcome i saved, <laughs> saved you a lot of time uh which is just fantastic so that is going so uh, all the way up there and, and i want to play one more clip um, uh, Alex, you had said there was a discovery that you had about one of these clips, and I wanted to share this one um, of you cracking because I think it's important that you all hear the crack. Because remember that it's not just from the old from the old way of thinking about it. It's not just two voices that you mix together, and some people are lucky to have a giant head voice or a giant chest voice. Release all that. Go back to the chest uh, chest head mix or chest mix head uh, episode we were talking mm -hmm. about referring to earlier, uh, and take a listen. Uh, you can also listen to my TED talk. Um, uh, just Google one voice, uh, Michael Mareska and listen to what I have to say and listen to what we're talking about in that chest head mix, um, show. And what you will learn and find out is that it's not about stretching anything or forcing anything. It's about allowing yourself to move to the next coordination and then building that up. Um, so I just, I, I, I want to share that with you all and I want you to take a listen to this cause it's really cool. All right. So here we go. This one is Alex. Uh, doing something similar, but listen to the very end. So that is... Yeah. So you go all the way down to an E flat, right? Mm -hmm. Around uh, in, 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 in middle coordination. You're all the way down to an E flat and middle coordination. So listen again where she starts. I'm going to play some of the notes again so you all can hear this. This is really cool. So what happens is she actually transitions beautifully. She starts on like a B flat. Then she moves all the way down, transitions magically from whistle, beautifully, whistle into head coordination, mind you, at the same weight. So there's no difference in weight between her head and her uh, and her whistle coordination. So they balanced out. So there wasn't a big crack or break. She didn't have one. She transitioned. And then went all the way down. And then when she got down to middle coordination, <laughs> she was in head coordination. She was very light. And then middle, like I said, like a zombie in the night, came in, bam, different weight. But that's what it was. It was just a different weight. So she... If, if the car, as it were, were driving along, it's about to come to a cliff, and that's what happened is, bam, the car fell off the cliff, yeah? Um, really cool. Mm -hmm. Do you want to say anything to Here, add? yeah, here's why this was such a huge discovery for me is because every time, and I mean every time until that very recording, I would sing and whistle, and I would try to do a scale into head coordination, and every time it would completely, fully skip head coordination and land in middle. Every time. So it was like, I can't, uh, I don't think I can access whistle right now, but here's an example. <laughs> like it straight up was like, no, no head coordination Absolutely. at all. Absolutely. And then Natalie and I were just uh, in the morning playing with our whistle coordinations. And uh, she said, which vowel do you do it on? And I was like, I don't think about that. And I was like, let me try something. I just picked an E for fun. And suddenly I could transition from whistle into head coordination. And I was like, Fantastic. thank you, Natalie Rankin. Thank you, Natalie Rankin. Thank you. Um, For those you don't know, Natalie Rankin, another fellow One Voice, certified One Voice coach. Uh, that's magic. Yep. That's magic. Iron sharpening yeah. iron. Uh, magnificent. Uh, that's it's, it's so stupid, but fantastic when it happens because it's magic. You feel amazing suddenly. 
Um, and yep, it's interesting that I, um, obviously, as, as we know, you know, with certain vowels, certain vowels for some of us in our brains um, tend to, our brains tend to lend themselves towards lightweight or heavyweight with certain vowels, which isn't true. It isn't necessary, but our brains have just kind of done that for themselves. Mm -hmm. Very kind of our brains. Um, and uh, mm -hmm. that's so interesting. So that's such an amazing lesson that you bring up. I think as you, as you all uh, listeners, as you guys are playing with this stuff, um, allow yourself to try different vowels, different things. Ooh, ah, e, ah, eh. Um, and see what occurs uh, as you play with it. Mm -hmm. Really cool. Really cool. Yeah. And I want to speak towards your clip, which was so awesome. Um, don't, to anyone out there who's trying to create or access new coordination, don't be afraid of the sounds that don't sound the way you expect them to or want them to. Don't compare your accessing a new coordination to someone else's developed coordination. Because sometimes the beginning is a really squeaky, tiny, awful sound. Uh, but that's the beginning of everything you could want. That's the beginning of happiness. No, that's... Uh... <laughs> Uh, that's fantastic. It's that's I love that. Thank you for that, Alex. Um, mm -hmm. uh, that just pumps me up. Okay, so we're going to shift gears and we're going to take a look at Rumble now uh, to see a little bit more about that. Um, yeah, let's take a look. So here we are. I'm going to use the same clip. Okay, and you guys are going to hear your first uh, first little tidbit of this. So same clip. Listen again. You're going to hear the coordination shift from head coordination into whistle. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually work my way down. Take a listen. Uh, is that the right run? Nope, sorry. Play that one. Approaching <laughs> the A of head coordination. Listen. Yeah, 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 yeah! Crack. Yeah, 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 yeah! And now at the G. And an E flat above soprano high C. Let's see if I can go a little bit higher. Then an F F sharp above soprano high C. F sharp above soprano high C. I'm gonna slowly come down. That's cool. <laughs> that's amazing. That's cool. Uh, that's perfect. That's yeah. Cool. Uh, uh, I'm obviously such a nerd about this, but yeah, you, you, as you are going down, what you all could hear is you could hear just the mess uh, that was occurring in my larynx when I was going down from whistle into head coordination again my body my brain was was saying oh so wait this new thing you want to go down but this is head coordinate i'll use head but maybe i should still use it. it was just a mess and that's what you could hear now i want to be clear that none of that hurt at all uh isn't damaging at all it's just a confusion of the muscles yeah um, and what's happening is because the muscles aren't working as they should on a particular area of coordination and they're kind of getting confused now, what you end up getting is you end up hearing this kind of weird, awkward sound that's kind of all messy and garbly. And that's, as Alex said, that's one of the things that a lot of people run away from. Um, and if you don't know uh, what the sounds, um, what sounds to look for, or what sounds to listen through, um, mm. meaning sometimes you have sounds, there's a bunch of sounds around and sometimes you have to listen through for what you're actually aiming for. And so in our world, we do that a lot. We have a lot of people who run away from sounds that are actually underneath all the garble there's a lot of really fantastic stuff going on and as long as they have someone to guide them past that uh there's actually some really cool stuff and the garble slowly starts to dissipate and you have this amazing thing underneath which is really cool so uh that takes us now to rumble to rumble um i want to share a few a few little audio clips on rumble uh that i think will be helpful for everybody in terms of listening to some of this and kyle this is going to be some stuff that will show you <laughs> 
this goes lower than the note in in uh, uh, Humphrey. Uh, what he sings is he sings. Um, I believe it's a. Uh... Oh yeah. That's what it is, yeah. Uh, so in the ending, he goes, uh, uh, the ring of. And he waits. If there's a, you guys will see a clip. There's a clip online. You have to look it up. The name is Tim Faust. Uh, but he goes down and he sings this bottom note and he drops down to a D above bass low C. And then he goes all the way down to a G, I believe, um, uh, below bass low C. So this is what you get. The ring of fire of, and then he drops, of fire. He drops all the way down to that G. Now notice my body. I think it's important to note this, and this is what I was asking Alex earlier. Was your face popping off while you hit this? Notice what my body's not having to do. As I go through it, I'm not suddenly having to go, um, the ring of fa, fa. I don't have to do that, right? Uh, because what I'm not doing is I'm not taking the old idea of taking these two pieces that I have and just stretching them. That's not the aim. Instead, I'm actually moving in the next coordination, yeah? Um, so when I go down, you'll hear this. And I'm gonna play this next clip for you, um, uh, for you to hear this. Uh, of me actually going down low and having more volume in here, which is really cool. So take a, take a listen to this. And this is actually with a break um, from chest coordination into rumble. And what you guys will hear, you will hear the same thing that happened to me from whistle into head coordination, which it all gets really garbly. So take a listen. Uh... So just to give you perspective, that's a D below bass low C. It's very low, it's very low. Uh, and it's not using any weird, um, it's not using any throat singing techniques. Uh, it has nothing to do with throat singing techniques. Those are my vocal cords making those sounds, not my false faults for those of you who are nerdy about that. Um, and uh, it's not a weird little trick. It's actually something that we can do. And something that you hear people do actually quite often, but generally the people you hear do it are what you would consider the freaks. They're the true basses, uh, the true altos. So Alex, um, I'm gonna mm -hmm. put you on the spot with some of this because I, I want people to hear this. Uh, ooh, ooh, ooh. Um, ooh, ooh, ooh. Uh, what I want you all to hear <laughs> is I want you all to hear um, uh, Alex move from chest coordination into rumble. And you're gonna hear it. She's gonna click in. It's gonna be awesome. Uh, so Alex, if you would, uh, I want you to try this one. More. So right now, uh, we're gonna be at like a, right now we're at like a uh, a flat to a C sharp. Okay, uh, and this is below middle C. So right now we're actually straddling uh, the coordination change between uh, chest and rumble. Just to take a look at that. Uh, let me bring that up for you all to take a look. So we're going between that green spot and that blue spot, everyone. Okay, so take a listen to uh, Alex doing this. Here we go, Alex, you ready? Uh, yeah. Put on whatever you want, <laughs> wow, 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 whatever. Cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good, great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. This is what I want to hear. This is so good. So take a listen to this. So Alex, Alex is going to go more towards this kind of farty sound. You'll hear it. It's like a farty sound, a, a froggy sound. So try that again. Go more towards that froggy sound, Alex. Froggy. Yeah. 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 Boom. Nailed it. Really good. That was fantastic, fantastic. I have to go down to come back up. <laughs> yes, yes. And what's, what, what, she's, what you guys are getting to hear in Alex is you're getting to hear one coordination kind of pull in and that's where you hear all that garbling happening. 
The garbling's happening because the brain's getting lost in which coordination it should be in. And so while she's moving into to rumble coordination, her body at the same time is still trying to utilize the muscles as if she were in chest coordination, which creates this kind of, uh, dissonance is the wrong word, but it creates this confusion in the larynx mm -hmm. as opposed to cleanly moving. Because what you'll hear is when she gets in a rumble, clean, easy, no problem, yeah? So try that one more time, but this time you're going to go from the bottom mm -hmm. up, yeah? So you can go like this for us. Mm -hmm. so uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. E Whew. <clears throat> yeah. 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 What note is that? Ooh. She's getting really close. She's on <clears throat> an A flat. Yeah. There it is. Okay. There <clears throat> she is. There she is. Try that again. Yeah. 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 That's so good. Ooh. Oh, it's so good. I'm so happy you guys are getting to hear this. Thank you, Alex. That was amazing. Uh, sure. so, so Alex, uh, that mm -hmm. really hurt a lot, right? Your throat feels sore now. I'm, I won't ever sing again. Uh, no, voice. it feels totally fine. Uh, it sounds like it might hurt, but it feels really, really super easy. Um, and even my face might look like it hurts the way I'm like concentrating, but it, <laughs> it has nothing to do with actual pain or physical effort. Um, and something about the hurt that I find interesting sometimes is, um, sometimes I'll ask a student, well, does it hurt? And they say, yes. And I say, really, can you explain the pain? And they go, well, it doesn't hurt. It sounds like it hurts. And I go, okay, cool. So make sure that you're separating those two ideas. Um, because we can make some really crappy sounds that are super beneficial. Thanks for that. I think that's, I think that's, uh... Uh, that's something that I think happens a lot in our world, right? We get confused about that. And we're like, oh, I think I should. Mm -hmm. And this, this definitely hurts, but it, it actually doesn't hurt. It just sounds weird to you. And so, yeah, I love that. I yep. Love um, Alex, mm -hmm. if you would, uh, can you do that one more time? One more time. Sure. This time you're going to go, wah, 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 wah. Not that low, but you're going to go like that. <clears throat> <laughs> oh no, you are gonna do that. Though. Sorry, <clears throat> but you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna Wah. froggy down, froggy slide up. Cool. Wah, 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 wah. Woo! You all can hear it. You hear it gets kind of garbly, and then bam, it's clear, and she just goes straight down to this pitch, which is amazing. Keep in mind, everyone, the pitches that she's singing right now are she's going from a a flat below baritone C to a C baritone C to an E flat above baritone C. So those are low notes for, for, for female, which is really incredible. Uh, for any of you out there who are, who are, uh, are assigned female at birth and you feel like you sound like uh, what you would call a man, right? Then you can sing lower than uh, many of your male friends. Then what you probably have done in your life is you probably uh, really developed rumble coordination. Doesn't mean you don't have access to all the other coordinations or have the potential to have access to all, and you do. You have the same potential that every other female has, um, just as every male has the same potential vocal aid. Um, so keep that in mind. Uh, if that's something that you would like to make different, you can. You can speak in your chest coordination, develop that. Speak in your middle coordination, develop that. It just depends on what you want, who you want to be in the world. Yeah? Um, yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah, yeah. All right, so let's take a look now. Uh, I want you guys to hear something a little bit different now. Um, in each of these coordinations, there can be a big difference in quality of sound, much like Alex was talking about earlier with um, uh, Mariah Carey. In fact, could you describe a little bit about that, um, the differences between, um, your perspective on the differences between Mariah Carey whistle uh, coordination and uh, the, the amazing opera singer you were Natalie to say. Natalie to say, thank you. Yeah, Mariah Carey, I would say she has a shorter vocal tract uh, shaping, yeah. a quieter volume, and those I think would be, I haven't really paid attention to weight, but I, I would bet there's a difference in weight. Natalie Desai, the opera singer, much larger vocal tract shaping and much louder volume for more of an opera styling and to make it sound more so like what she's doing in her head coordination. Which one is crispier sounding? Ooh. Uh, clearer. 
clearer. I would say the Mariah Carey is more like dog whistly. Yeah, yeah, like 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 ethereally esque. Yeah, it sounds like whistle. Yeah, you hear that? Yeah. You hear that like whisper of air. Um, mm -hmm. You may not hear that from Natalie, right? Correct. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So this is a this is a big difference in weight. Um, and I want to, and other, other factors, but I want to talk just specifically to the weight for a second. And the same is true for rumble. Uh, oftentimes what gets confused and we, we may do a whole show on this at some point, but, um, uh, is this confusion of fry. People say, oh, that's vocal fry. Well, in the world of one voice, we don't really use the term vocal fry. Uh, and the reason is, is because it's a non-specific term. It's a generalized term that encompasses many different modes of sound or many different ways of making sound. Uh, so, for example, you might hear someone say, I'm going to go to the gym, gym, gym tomorrow. I'm going to go to the gym tomorrow. They're like, oh, you're frying. And you might also hear someone say, oh, my gosh, Jenny, I'm going to go to the gym tomorrow. And you're like, oh, my gosh, you're frying your voice, right? Those two are very different things. One utilizes what are called the false folds in the larynx, and the other actually continues to utilize the vocal folds. Um, and you'll, you'll probably notice that the people who talk like this like actually are always fine. Their voices are fine. They can talk <laughs> like this and they're fine all the time. But you have someone who talks like this all the time and you'll probably find that they've actually, their voices, they lose their voices quickly. They go hoarse more often uh, because what they're doing is they're actually forcing a coordination. They're trying to hit a low note and what they end up doing is end up shoving down the coordination to get the low note because that's, a, that's the only way their brain knows how to go after it. Instead of moving to the next coordination and building it up. So with that being said, moving into a coordination, uh, coordination that you haven't or that you're not used to hearing, uh, one of the things you may want to work on identifying is identifying the weight that you're in. So when you listen to this, um, I, want you to, I want you to pay attention to the difference in weight. I have this really silly clip of me uh, achieving a light weight in rumble, <laughs> which sounds truly like another person um, because it's not something you're used to hearing from me. But it is me, in fact. So take a listen. I think you'll enjoy this silly. This is what happens with someone who's playing. <laughs> I'm sorry. There we go. Right now, what you'll notice is I've got a very lovely lightweight of a rumble. And this would ultimately be the goal for a lightweight. As you can tell, speaking in an English accent really does help accessing a lightweight and rumble. <laughs> I'm joking. This has nothing to do with rumble. This is pure talent. <laughs> I was born this way, and this is how I've always talked. I have been putting on a show this entire time and didn't want any of the coaches or anyone to know my true identity. The name is Mortimer. Mortimer of the Shire. Good day. What did you say? Me? Oh, no. The name's Michael Mareska. Or is it Mortimer? No, it's definitely Michael. I think that it is Mortimer the third. Good night. What's wrong? Um, That's incredible. Isn't that just insane? Wow. It, it sounds, you can hear all the air, which is amazing. And it feels amazing. Oh, uh, getting into that sort of weight and that coordination feels so full, as people might say. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, and it really, it really gives you the sound of, of, of being what people would refer to as a true bass. Um, and that was me. That was my voice, right? And I'm not, I'm not some unicorn, and it's not magic. Uh, and I think that's what's so cool about all of this is that it's, it's not magic. Uh, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, Alex, I wanted to ask you a question about your experience Um with what it was like gaining access to a, to a coordination. What's it like getting access to a new coordination? Hmm. Yeah, it's weird. Again, it doesn't, it, oftentimes it doesn't feel like how you expect it's going to feel. Um, it's tricky because the neighboring coordinations want to take over. So my chest coordination wants to take over and rumble and my head wants to take over and whistle. Um, but it's it's a really cool, interesting experience to feel what it feels like and then develop from there. Yeah. With your experience in terms of gaining access to uh, to these coordinations, I'm curious 
what rumble felt like to you because we've talked about whistle and i'm curious to, to know mm -hmm. what rumble felt like to you when you gained access to that did you always have access to rumble i think i did okay here's what's weird i think i had access to super rumble but not rumble so super rumble is the coordination past like beneath rumble coordination um which i think i would dip into sometimes when I spoke or when I was just joking around or doing like, Hey, what's up? Like any of that stuff. Um, but my chess coordination would dip, uh, would take over my actual rumble coordination. Um, so in working with you at, during school, that's when I actually gained access to rumble coordination. Um, and it felt super weird and weak, a lot fartier <laughs> than I thought. Um, having a short vocal tract helped a lot with developing it and with helping my brain, transition instead of pulling chest down, keeping a short vocal tract helps my brain go, okay, you're trying to do something new now. Um, instead of like, Oh, like following my tract with the note. Um, yeah. I experienced the same thing with going down. Mm -hmm. I, I realized that I needed to stop my larynx forcing down because my, my vocal tract was just trying to get bigger, bigger. Oh, you can see my larynx. Do, oh. But then I really mm -hmm. didn't do that at all. Oh, it was amazing. It was amazing. Oh, and in fact, when I was first playing with it, I would go the opposite direction, like you were saying. I'd make my vocal tract really small. Uh, like SpongeBob. SpongeBob. SpongeBob mm -hmm. talks in yeah. Rumble. Take that. Secrets out in your face world. <laughs> SpongeBob. Uh, yeah. The other thing, and this is a total side note, this is true of any coordination. Um, I am so annoyed right now because I think of myself as having a developed rumble coordination. And because I haven't been working on it, it sounds like what you all heard. And I'm like, yeah. I know I can work on it again and I can get it back. But I, yeah, it's just, you can't, <laughs> you can't not work on something and expect it to be there, which I learn all the time. And that's something I'm learning right now. What? What? It won't I know, always be there for, for your whole life. Yeah, yeah, you snooze, you lose, folks. You snooze, you lose. Uh, it goes. It's so real. It's so real. Uh, I think I only have one more question, and then we'll wrap, mm -hmm. um, which is how do you, because this is always the question, right? How do you gain access? Uh, how do you gain access to a coordination you don't currently have access to? Um, my, thank you. <clears throat> uh, my biggest piece of advice, especially for whistle is do it when you first wake up, try and make noises when you first wake up, because if you have a bully coordination or zombie coordination, as you call them, Michael, it will not be awake at the time. So it will be less likely to take over those notes. Uh, and your body is more likely to find that combination of, or coordination of muscles that are needed to access those pitches. Um, for whistle, so right when you wake up and using as little, way less air than you think you need. Um, and I would say the same thing for any new coordination. Uh, don't don't use a ton of air in the beginning. Um, I love how we have yeah. like, we have to like sneak around, we have to sneak around our, <laughs> our you know, like yes. we have to get in there and it's like, is my brain awake? Go, 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 Randy. Quick, get access to the coordination. And it's a, it's just, it. you only know what we're talking about once you experience it. And it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's comical, really, what happens. And you feel it because you're like, yeah, 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 yeah. And it just, boom, just throws you down to the ground. It's amazing. Couldn't have said it better. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. Uh, great. Alex. Any other words of wisdom for those who are trying to access these coordinations, trying to build them, think they need them? Uh, what would you say to the aspiring rumbler and whistler out there? One voice. Here. I would say, I would say, uh, play with a ton of different stuff. Like play with the less air, with the doing it at different times of day. Um, but don't limit yourself just to the things that we're saying. See what else you can what else you can try. Because like Natalie yesterday being like, what vowel do you do it on? Completely blew my mind. And I found something totally new. And that's awesome that I had never thought of before. Um, so yeah, just play around. Don't be scared of sounds. Um, yeah, and share with us what sounds you make. I would love to hear some like new whistle rumble coordinations from people. That would be so awesome. That would be amazing. And you can actually share those with us on our Instagram uh, on our Instagram account. Follow us there. 
at sing one voice mm -hmm. sing one voice three words uh, and you can actually message us directly whatever questions you have uh as well as audio snippets of you accessing a coordination that is so cool we would love to hear that we'd love to be a part of your celebration in that uh being part of the one voice family wow Alex, this has been so fun and so exciting. Thank you for taking the time out of your so cool. schedule. Um, and uh, it's been a blast actually sitting in your chair uh, virtually, as it were. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, thanks for this. It's been a real joy. Uh, next week. Thank you so much. And thank you for taking over, Michael. You're killing it. You're thank killing you. it. Thank you. Thank you. It's been a joy. Um, really a joy. It's been really fun. And thank you for all of our, our viewers and the people who uh, support us doing this. It's been a joy doing this for you all. <clears throat> and we will continue. Uh, wow. Okay. So that brings us to the end of the show for today. Next week, uh, Alex Zita will be back uh, in this chair, owning it, owning it again. Really, really exciting. Uh, and we will continue the world of One Voice Live next week. One Voice Live, another One Voice Live show will be coming at you Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. CT. Until then, stay curious and enjoy your voice, everyone. We'll see you next week. Thank you.